Hello and welcome to our Menopause Mastery Masterclass. My name is Belle Flowers and the beautiful woman beside me is Marianne Mormon. And today we are going to be taking you through uh, an introduction into who we are, what we stand for, and most importantly, how we can help you on your peri and menopausal journey. So as we get started, let me just introduce a little bit about myself and then I'll pass you over to Marianne. I've been a women's wellness practitioner for over 25 years now. I started in remedial massage. I became a pregnancy massage specialist and I moved into the postnatal world as well. I moved into counseling, into um, emotional kinesiology uh, in order to really help women in the transition stages of their lives. And here I am in this perimenopausal stage of my life and I'm realizing that there is a lot that we need to learn and that there is this movement that's happening now right across the world, across many labs across the world, across many journals across the world, where we're realizing that women have not been studied in the right way. And we're starting to see emerging research that tells us how we can look after ourselves um, so that we can thrive during perimenopause in particular, so that when we go through menopause and into that last stage of our lives, which hopefully if we live to be 80 or 90 years old, it'll be the, the over one third of our life. And so what we bring together is years of um, different approaches. Myself, I am always looking at mindset. I'm always looking at how can we um, approach daily life, daily habits so that we can be offering ourselves the best possible because what I've noticed of working with thousands of women is that we tend to put ourselves last. We've believed the rhetoric that we need to make sure everyone else is okay and then we can look after ourselves. You know, anytime you catch a plane, you just need to realize, listen to what the announcement is saying, put on your own oxygen mask first because you're no use to anyone else if you're not looking after yourself, okay? So in this session, I really want you to Allow yourself to be in that selfish mode. Selfishness is not necessarily a bad word. Looking after your own needs means that you're going to have more vitality, you're going to have more energy, and you're going to have much more patience to give out to other people. And that will just make you a happier, more content woman in these transition years for you. So Marianne, can you share with us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I will start with just say, my name is Marianne Mormon, but I just want to say thank you so much to Belle, reminding us at this point that we tend to put so much out there and care for other people, but we do forget to care for ourselves and to love ourselves and to put ourselves first. Because if you are not going to be the best version of yourself, you are not going to be anything. You are not being able to help other people. So do remember to put yourself first. Mm. Now. Um, my name is Marianne Willman. I've been, um, I'm a fitness and a nutrition coach. I used to do it for the general population. Um, but then with things happening in my life, and as Val said, we realized that there is so much out there um, to help people going through the stage in life because there's a lot of information out there. But who do you really trust? Who do you believe? What do you listen to? Um, so I went away. I've been doing this for, for, I started helping people in the industry more than 10 years ago. Um, but just in the last three or years, I've really um, focused on menopausal people. So I went away, I started, I completed um, Stacey Sims, a menopausal course. I've um, been doing, uh, before that, I did the nutrition coaching I've got my full um, certificate for classes and for training as a PT. But all of that information, if you put it together and you really look at the state that you're in in this phase of your life, there's so much for you to learn because things that's worked previously no longer will work. But the good thing is you can actually make small changes and you can have the results that you do want to have again. Mm, absolutely you can and it is it's so simple it is just small simple changes but it's it's like a paradigm shift from what we've been told now um 
I recently just completed a medical science degree. And I know that some of the things that we were being taught about nutrition just wouldn't work for me. And it didn't matter how much I spoke up during my lectures or through the tutor, um, the tutor classes, um, they weren't going to hear it. So what, what we are bringing you and what wealth of knowledge that Marianne has is from leading edge research. It is not what's being taught. I can guarantee that it is not what's being taught in the mainstream universities right now. That will happen in the next 10 to 15 years, but that's usually how long it takes to come through from cutting edge research um, with real results from real women. And so that's what we're going to be bringing you. So Marianne, I thought we could begin, um, actually, before we even go into symptomology, let us just say unequivocally, disclaimer, we are not medical practitioners. Uh, we are bringing you this as information and education so that you are better equipped to ask better questions of your medical mm -hmm. practitioners. And so we encourage you to take notes, write things down and do your own research, but be super careful. Dr. Google is not a thing. And also asking your best friend who has got no training <laughs> at all uh, is, is a good idea, but don't take their word verbatim, okay? So get yourself educated and that's what we plan to do with you um, so that you are better informed and you, are, I always say forewarned is to be forearmed and then you can ask better questions. Now, what we do know from the research is that um, general practitioners are just that. Many G GPs are not trained in menopause education apart from just a few modules that they might do in med school. Usually it is an elective that they need to specialize in. So first and foremost, if you do need medical advice, please seek out a specialist in women's health and you can find details online and we are happy to share those with you depending on where you are in the world. But there is a vast resources in Australia for um, specialist practitioners that um, are getting themselves educated and learning as much as they can in this space. So let's talk then a little bit about the symptoms of perimenopause. Let's see if we can, <laughs> have we got time to list them all, Marianne? <laughs> Let's see how we go. Oh my goodness, you are so right. Where do we start? The thing is, there's obviously symptoms like hot flash, flash, flashes, um, night sweats, um, like feeling, the sense of feeling crazy, wondering what's happening to yourself. But there's all these symptoms that we don't, don't actually realize that they are slight, they are kind of, saying that you are going into the early phases of perimenopause and we don't realize that. Mm -hmm. So things of your mood, like you get really, really cranky. Um, things that you are so tired, you can't understand why you are tired. And um, things that you're starting to gain weight, weight shifts to your midsection. Um, all those little bits and pieces are things that points to perimenopause. Um, but as Val said, the list is massive. So, yeah, yeah I, I'll never be able to name yeah. all of them. Well, you know what I think might be um, a great place to actually start is to give some definitions of what perimenopause is. You know, um, I was looking through a very large UK study and it actually said that, you know, the vast majority of women didn't know what peri was. Um, but I, you know, just this morning, I opened my emails and my yoga studio where, um, where I do all of my um, teacher training from, they've just released a perimenopause and yoga thing. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Normally it's just menopause, right? So let me be very clear about definitions according to the current literature. Perimenopause is that period of time, pardon the pun, a pe <laughs> that period of time when your cycle, I know I'm here all day, um, when your cycle starts to change. Now, I always thought that was when, it started to, to be like 21 days or 35 days or 17 days. No, no, no. It's when you start to notice changes from your usual. So seven years ago, I now know I started perimenopause because I started to bleed heavier. 
And that was really random because it was still like clockwork every 29-ish days, right? But the bleeding changed. And I know some women will get heavier bleeding. Some women will get very light bleeding. Some women will get incredible PMS symptoms. And other pe people, it's almost like, yeah, what was that? I, I, it's like I, I sniffed and coughed and then it's gone, right? So cycle changes are an indication that your estrogen is starting to decline. The, the thing that we can rely on is that in perimenopause, everything is unreliable. It's almost like if I was to draw a graph, it would go up and down with the levels of your estrogen. Now, with your progesterone, which is a hormone that's really active in keeping uh, you pregnant, right? So if you happen to have a fertilized egg, progesterone will shoot up and it will help to nourish the uterus to keep you pregnant. So progesterone starts to rise in that last phase of your cycle before your bleed. And then if you find yourself pregnant, awesome. If you find yourself not pregnant, you bleed and that's why you actually have your period because you're just letting go of the lining. So what we know is that progesterone will start to decline fairly steadily, but estrogen will just be having a party. It'll be up all night. It'll be not up all night, right? It'll be up and down the whole time. So is it any wonder you're moody, you're irritable, you have fatigue, uh, you have low patience uh, for things you normally could tolerate? Is it any wonder sometimes you just want to cry? Yeah. So, so those are some of the, the mood kind of things that you can expect, but musculoskeletal pain is about, it affects about 70% of women. Um, yet the studies tell us that only about 50% will report it. And then like myself, we'll be told by doctors, well-meaning, of course, after countless tests, countless MRIs, nothing's wrong. Uh, yeah, there, there is nothing wrong. What's happening is our, our estrogen is going into decline. Our progesterone is going into decline. And that means we're going to feel more pain. And because we're losing estrogen into our tissues, because you know what? We don't just need estrogen from the ovaries and the uterus area. We need it in our brain, in our bones, in our muscles, in our liver, in our heart. We need it in many tissues of the body. So you might even notice cognitive decline. Brain fog, anyone? <laughs> I get brain fog all the time. I first noticed it, right? Back in my early 40s, I would trip over my words or I couldn't find the right word. I cannot tell you how many times I told my kids to go vacuum the lawn. Couldn't figure out to say mo. I still do it, right? It's just the gift that keeps on giving. So what we do know is that drop in estrogen plays a critical role in our brain health. And so when you're starting to forget things, you're starting to forget, you go to the shops, man, I do this all the time. You go to the shops without a list, it's a free for all. I'm not going to get what I need, but I'm going to get what I wanted, right? Which is really bad if I'm feeling a little bit moody, a little bit precious, and I'm going to choose the chocolate and the ice cream that's not going to make me feel well. So it's this vicious cycle. So this is where we need to understand what's happening and why we need experts in nutrition and movement like Marianne that can actually help us to get back on track and to show us the way so that we can actually manage these really full-on symptoms. Marianne, do you have anything that you might want to add to that? No, I well, what I can add is just exactly what you're saying. You know how we go like we actually like we can't think properly because of the loss of estrogen. It's actually called um you do get low energy energy to your brain as well. So some of the 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 brain issues we have is due to people cutting out carbohydrates completely and fructose because that's actually the glucose that's needed for your brain there's sugar that's needed for your brain mm, okay so we are going to get into that because um that is a big thing right and I wonder if you're watching this, if this is you, you thinking I'm putting on the weight around the middle and I'm not feeling my best, feeling a bit frumpy. I don't want to wear a bathing suit. I know what I'll do. I'll cut out carbs. Right. And so as Marianne just said, it's probably one of the worst things you can do. So stick around because we're going to get to that. I want to touch on briefly, and Marianne, I can talk all day on this topic, so I want you to give me a very solid, like, that's it, Belle. Stop telling them all the things. It's not an anatomy lesson. But I want to share just a little bit about your nervous system and why it's critical in this time of your life that you get your nervous system balanced as best you can. 
I want to start by saying that what you've done in the past generally, see, I'm tripping over my words. Hello, Perry. Um, It won't work in your 40s if you're starting to become quite symptomatic. So we have to do something very differently. I often say that our hormones are the canary in the coal mine. You might have heard it's a very old saying, but back in the day, coal miners would take a canary down into the mines with them, that the canary would whistle all day. If the canary stops whistling, they need to get out of there because there's no oxygen left, right? So it's a terrible thing to, to use as an analogy, but it's it works for us. If we are starting to not sleep, because we didn't mention that, if we're not sleeping well, if we are not eating well, if we're not moving well because we're in constant pain, those three things are actually going to um, further dysregulate our nervous system. And when I talk about the nervous system, it's your brain, it's your spinal cord, and it's all of your peripheral nerves as well. It's everything that makes you feel, everything that makes you move. Um, When we are very stressed, and it can be from an external stressor, work, life, <laughs> uh, kids, animals, it, it, but it can also be from internal stresses, not eating enough, not moving the right way, not sleeping well, um, eating the wrong foods, what have you, right? So we can have internal and external stresses. And so we need to be able to learn some tools to help bring us back into this beautiful, grounded, calm state so that we can actually think clearly enough to make better choices. Because what we know is that when we Um, have a goal and we are clear enough and we can make better choices, we actually get better outcomes and the cycle will continue and continue. So how do we get a baseline of good levels of our nervous system? Well, I want you to just be breathing through your nose while I tell you this. And this is, um, it's not the magic formula, but it is quite magical what can happen in our bodies when we breathe just through the nose. So take a deep, gentle breath with me now. Breathe out through the nose long slow, calmly. Just keep breathing like that, just gently in and long, deep breath out. So what we're doing here is we're telling our physical body it's okay to go and relax. Quite often we spend our time up here, 100%. We're just, we're on alert. We've got to get things done. We certainly don't want to forget things. We've got 85 to-do lists that we must do. We forget what they are. That spikes our, our stress as well. And then we've got demands from everything outside of us. And so if we're operating here all the time, We're actually really draining our adrenals and we're um, forcing our adrenal glands to pump out our stress hormones. When that happens, it means that we are going to go into a holding pattern that's up here that's telling our body, don't worry about digestion, just get heaps of glucose into the muscles because you're in a sympathetic fight or flight state. Now, sympathetic doesn't mean sympathy and emotion. It just means as part of our autonomic nervous system just tells us that we are on. And that's what we're doing. So you might find that you're in this cycle of go, 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 crash and stop. Go, 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 crash and stop. Um, I see it a lot in school teachers. They go, 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 go the whole term. And they get sick on those two weeks in, in between term, right? So um, if that's you, we can we can fix that. Um, and it do, you don't have to get sick to stop. So we are just going to give you permission now to make rest something you do every day, intentional rest, not sitting and scrolling rest. That is a different kind of mental rest, Um, but sitting, breathing gently through the nose. Are you still doing it? Breathing deep down into the belly. Let's do that now. Place your hands on your belly. As you breathe in through the nose, push your belly outwards a little. And as you breathe out, draw your belly back a little. We want to get that belly moving in and out like a wave because what that's doing is starting to work and tone on one of our cranial nerves. It's called the vagus nerve. It comes from the brain stem at the back, um, right up the top of the neck. And then it goes down right through and it sits around the organs and actually plays a role in moving you from a sympathetic state into a parasympathetic state. Fight or flight, rest and digest. When we're in a rest and digest phase, everything becomes a little bit softer, a little bit more open, a little bit more ease. And when we're digesting well, it means that we're getting enough nutrients into our body and we're actually allowing all of the muscles around the belly to relax. It doesn't mean they have to go flabby, right? We've got got something for that. It's more about the tone to allow, send a message back to the brain, all is well. 
we can relax. We don't need as much glucose in the body. So you might notice that you, um, as you get older, there's a tendency towards becoming um, pre-diabetic or developing type two diabetes. This is called a lifestyle disease because it's from years of being stressed, pumping that cortisol into the body, which then uh, allows our body to pump more glucose into the body. And it's also from the food choices that we have and whether or not we're sedentary or if we move or not. So it's multifaceted, but this is why I just wanted to share why these diseases um, happen. And it's something that is actually preventable and reversible. So we need, we owe it to ourselves to spend time to come into deep rest every day. And, you know, I teach a three minute breath work meditation three minutes a day, put a timer on your phone, breathe deeply in through the nose, breathe deeply out through the nose and move the belly in and out as you go. And the reason that works is because it's constantly reminding your body it's okay. You can come back to a baseline. If you practice that three times a day, I guarantee you're going to feel better. And I wonder if you practiced it every day, if your blood work might change, if how busy your mind is might change. And you might find after three minutes, you actually want to do six. You just press repeat. Maybe you want to do nine, press repeat. So it's not about how long you're doing it for, although that plays a role, but it's about your intention to set yourself up to relax, to rest, to bring your baseline of stress down so that you give yourself a fighting chance. Do you have anything to add to that, Marianne? What I can add is that I've learned so much just by listening to you. <laughs> and that's definitely something I have to incorporate in my life um, because I fully understand the flight and fight, but fight and flight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is so general. <laughs> like we always, we got so much to do and we just keep going and going and going. So um, even with our food, I know that fasting is a big thing, but that's another thing. Fasting actually increase your cortisol level. Um, so I'll cover that a little bit later. Yeah. But just a quick add where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I want you to tell us a bit about um, what we call your pain points. What did you notice and how did you overcome them and how are you sharing um, what you do and what you've learned with your clients? Okay. So I used to be that person that nothing really happened for me. I found a way to change that before I reached the age of 40. Um, and then about two years ago, I'm like I'm later in my 40s now, about two or three years ago, I suddenly found that that no longer worked. What I used to do and used to work fine for me never just wouldn't give me the results that I wanted and didn't give me the energy I wanted. So what I've done then is I went away, I did some studies, I changed my way of training I changed my way of feeling myself. As I said, stop doing intermittent fasting, um, train heavy, stop doing the excessive um, cardio to try and like burn more calories because when you are in this phase, there's no such thing as calories in and calories out. What you're actually putting into your body is what gives you the results. Um, because if you're going to be eating 2,000 calories of just ice creams, breads, pastas, you're not going to have the same as we're going to be eating 2,000 calories in a well-balanced diet. Yeah, yeah. It sounds it sounds super complicated, um, and it's and what I know because I've worked with you, it, it's not as complicated as it sounds. But what is more complicated is that we've been taught this calories in calories out you know I know for all of my adult life that's what I've been told and so to kind of suddenly go ah oh, it's about quality it's about nutrient rich foods you know so um, that's definitely something that um, I'm keen to hear more of when when you talk about that but I want to share why I started working with you Marianne because I hope that that might be really inspiring to other people so I was always super fit. I exercised every single day for as long as I can remember um, up until around the age of 40. And I, I mean, I even did a mud run on my own when everyone had teams helping them over, right? <laughs> like I was just, 
I was a mad woman. I would leap like a gazelle, my friend said to me. And I, you know, I was always exercising. I loved it. I put on weight um, through my pregnancies. I got it off. I got into the best shape of my life by the age of 36. Um, and I really feel like that was my prime, 36 to 40. But I was also pushing and pushing and pushing in my business with my three children, with a problematic marriage. Um, and so I found that by the time I turned 40, not long after, I got really sick with glandular fever and then I just completely crashed. It's like my body just gave up. And when you're not doing this anymore, you're just going to meditate all the time because you can't move. So, you know, cut forward to seven years later, I've got a history of musculoskeletal issues, diagnosed with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. Um, my brain wants to work out all the time. So every now and then, usually every six months or so, I'd attempt to go to a gym or I'd attempt <laughs> to do what I used to do. Um, and I would crash. I would crash for weeks. Um, and when I used to say to people in the gyms, I just want you to know I've got chronic fatigue. And, you know, if I do one session, I probably won't be able to walk properly for a week. They never believed me. And um, so they would just kind of get me to exercise like everyone else under 40 without chronic conditions. And it never worked. And so when I got to the stage, when I met Marianne um, in, a, in a women in business group, I, I, I was so surrendered. I was just willing to do whatever she told me. And even if that included having to stick to a meal plan, because <laughs> I have a willful spirit and I like food and I used to exercise so that I could eat whatever I wanted. And that just doesn't set you up for longevity and a life of feeling good in your body. Um, it got me to the age of 40 and ever since it's been trying to teach me, no, no, no. So when I started working with Marianne, she, she asked me what I was eating and I told her and I thought I was being really good and, and her words just penetrated my soul. And she said, darling, why are you starving yourself? And I'm like, but I'm eating. And it turns out I wasn't eating nearly enough. I certainly wasn't doing, you know, that fast 800 diet. I wasn't doing anything like that, but I wasn't eating enough um, in each meal to satisfy my body, um, to keep me satiated so that I didn't need to snack because it was the snacking that was getting me and I had no idea. Um, and so working with Marianne, just this constant checking in, how are you going? Tell me your wins what's happening for you and just having someone that I could be accountable to and fully transparent with changed the game. I lost five kilos in three months and or before three months and I've kept that off and I've continued to just go and go and go. And so now regular exercise is just part of my life. Um, and I can't believe that I can consistently go for a bushwalk or a dog walk or do my yoga practice or do my, I've got a reformer kind of thing in my house, um, or I can lift a little bit of weights now. Like I can't believe it because I haven't been able to do that for seven years. So that is just incredible, isn't it, Marianne? It's just amazing. You know what, Val, these stories that, like your story is truly amazing. I am so proud of you. And I'm so proud of you sticking to that meal plan because I remember at the start when I said, Val, this is what I would like you to have for the week. You just go like, my brain doesn't work like that. I cannot do a meal plan. No. And then you decided to give it a go. Mm -hmm. And I remember the words like two or three days and you will really like going, oh, my energy. And I actually get up early in the morning so I want to walk and my body started to feel better yeah. you don't have that stress constant stress on you anymore that's right. so that's what's so amazing about like giving me the authority to help people is that help them lead them and teach them to what they need to do in their lives small yeah. changes you can make that will actually set you up for success yeah and that's nothing to do with having a trainer day in day night it's about your mental state, mm -hmm. about how you see food, how you how you train, how you move, and how you're looking after yourself. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And that's why we've really teamed up, isn't it? Because we, you've got the technical and then I've got the mindset. And so I know how to coach. I just, you know, we're our, our worst own teacher, right? So the, I always say, you know, you can always spot the hairdresser with their hair not done or the nail tech without their nails done or the mechanic with their cars half built on their front lawn, right? So for me, it's, I, I teach health and wellness all the time, but I only have a limited amount of brain space left at the end of the day to look after myself. So that's where Marianne was able to help me. And I just feel like you just need a team of supporters, right? It doesn't matter if it's one person or 80. You just need people around you that are working towards common goals that um, that have experience in these areas of motivation, of po building positive habits, of overcoming intrusive negative thoughts, of teaching you what you think you thought you knew is actually science that was not sciencing on women. It was, it was research that was done on men. And that's why this, what we do works because we've lived it and we share it and we, we have the people in our worlds that we can actually say, yeah, you know, we, we've watched them transform and Marianne has watched me transform. I've, felt myself transform back into the woman I always was. I just have much better eating <laughs> routines now um, and I plan. And so that's what we want to be able to bring to, to you as well. So I want, let's go into it. Let's get straight into it for this last um, part of the session, Marianne. Tell us, you know, how do you have to change? I want to start with, with movement because we've talked about nutrition a lot. I want to talk yep. about how, with our training, with um, our daily routines, how do we have to change? Okay. So you know how I touched on saying calories in, calories out? That's a mindset we still have. It's ingrained in us because that's been told to us for so long. Now, what we used to think is, um, if you have a cookie, it means you need to burn 200 calories and that's like two hours walking. But that's actually not the truth because it depends on your body. It depends on how much muscle you have. It depends on your um, state, how you stressed you are, how nourished you are, how good you feel. So my advice to you would be stop counting calories and doing the movements to burn those calories. Um, start focusing on heavy lifting. And another little trick, phase two training, where you just can be, can be going for hours and hours and you're really puffed, walking, 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 stop doing that. It's not going to give you the results. Oh, cardio? Ooh. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Phase two training, um, can you can you explain that just a little bit more for people that are not in the fitness world that wouldn't have heard that yep. term? Sure. Okay. So phase two training is where you train, but it's too easy to be hard and too hard to be easy. So it's an admit section. Okay. You're kind of not really pushing and you're not really recovering. Is it like if you go for a 60-minute walk every day? Yes, at a fast that. pace when your heart is racing constant, just like a steady Got it. state walk, yeah. which is good for males, but okay. for us, it's not good. Ha! Huh. And is it just uh, is it just for women in general, or is it at, at a particular stage of our life? Well, I'll say in the perimenopause, menopausal phase, like previously in our lives, we could do things like that because your body can handle stress better. Yeah. But now, because our bodies are in constant stress mode, you want to reduce the amount of stress that you're putting onto your into your body. Mm. So you want to create an extreme external stressor mm -hmm. and recovery rather than a constant stress, stress, stress. Yeah. So I used to like love 45 it. 45-minute boot camps, 45-minute oh. boot camps, they are no longer your thing. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, I used to love it when I'd get, when I was younger, when I was in my thirties and twenties and I was working on, you know, old women, 40 year olds and, <laughs> and above. I used to love it because I knew they were going to be a client for a very long time because they're like, oh, I'm getting my body back and I'm going to be training. I'm like, you are going to hurt yourself and you're going to be here every week getting a massage, <laughs> right? I just was like, bing, that's a dollar sign, right? It's karma. It's karma now. 
So, okay, so we I do see a lot of men and women who start working out again in their 40s. It's like they get this new lease on life. Um, my favourite is actually men who go back to soccer at 40. I'm like, Meh. so when women um, when women start doing hardcore training like F45s or CrossFit or any of those boot camps, are you saying that that could actually spike their cortisol and make them it does spike onto cortisol. the weight? It does. Oh, it, that, it's, and- it's not suggest that at all. Yeah, so that's why we see it. We hear women saying, I'm, I'm, I'm sweating, I'm bright red, and I'm flogging myself, but nothing is changing. That makes so much sense. Um, okay, so this idea of an external stressor, tell us what that means. Okay, external stressor means lift heavy or do um, steady, like do interval training, but not necessarily the normal heat training. We'll be doing a 45 minute on RPM bikes. Yeah. We're going to go up, down, up, down, up, down. You have to really put a lot of stress on your body. You need to create a stressor on your muscle because of our loss in estrogen, our muscles, that's what actually makes our muscles strong so they can contract mm. and build. Mm. But if we no longer have estrogen in our bodies, our muscle lose the capability to do that. Yeah. So my programs, I help you incorporate an external stressor, which creates the, a nerve reaction to tell your muscle it needs to become stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Simples. <laughs> Simples. I know. <laughs> but that actually sounds like it needs to be um, individualized for some people. It definitely needs to be individualized for some people because especially us now, some people have knee issues, some people's got back issues, some people's got elbow issues. Yeah. So you cannot look at a general program and we can no longer train to build muscle the way that we used to do it. You know, we will go like 12, 10, 8, 8, those kind of sets. It's yeah. nothing to do with that, those reps. It's got yeah. nothing to do with it. Yeah. Okay, cool. That that makes sense to me. You know, you forgot to mention that pesky frozen shoulder that happens to in perimenopause mm-hmm. for no reason, right? I've had that. Have you yeah. had that? Uh, luckily, no, I haven't. But I do tell you, though, I could feel it slightly. And I've just actually incorporated like um, anti-inflammatory drops into my life. Um, and I'm reckoning that's what it is because even my back and my knee, yeah. those pesky pains, yeah, they kind of like diminishing, but it's so common. Everybody's got some issue somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a good point that you raise inflammation because that tends to be rampant in perimenopause because couple things: estrogen helps with, as you said, the nerves in our muscles, um, in in and with all major tissues and organs of the body. But progesterone is a calming hormone, so that actually has an effect on our nervous system as well. See how it's all nervous system related? We can't get away from it. Every part of our body is interconnected. We cannot separate our body into parts anymore so that's old stuff it doesn't work it's not holistic um, which is what we are talking about here so this idea of reducing inflammation you can take things to help reduce inflammation but you can also eat well to help reduce the inflammation of that stress response Um, and you can move in a way that's actually going to exert a stressor on your body which will actually teach your body how to go up and down between high regulation and low regulation as well so there, there is so much that we need to learn isn't there as women about how to treat our body well and not just flog ourselves at a boot camp or in the gym or yeah whenever I see people just sitting on those bikes I just go "Mm, that's not going to work or on the stairmaster that's not going to work either so um yeah so I think what if I was to sum up what you're saying is it's lifting heavy and get yourself into those high intensity um, peaks for for a period of time but not in that long period of time because you're actually doing yourself a disservice is that right spot on Cool. Okay. Awesome. So I know that people are going to be thinking, okay, great. Um, but I want to know about the food. So how do you fuel your body to keep strong? Cause remember 
muscle loss or sarcopenia is um, a symptom of perimenopause and more into menopause and postmenopause years. When you lose muscle, mm -hmm. and we would have seen plenty of women, grandmothers, you know, that are losing their muscle mass. So how do we ensure that we stay str as strong as possible and we get great results for our body, whatever that happens to be? Okay, so what we want to do is around our training session, especially beforehand and after, we want to feel for that workout. We want to put our take the stress of our body because when you do train, you put stress on your body. So, which means that your body goes more catabolic. Now, if say for instance you train first thing in the morning. Um, and you go to have a session, an hour session at the gym, you get home, get ready for work first, and then you have uh, your breakfast, it's way too long. Okay. So what happens is when we wake up in the morning, half an hour after that, our cortisol is at the highest level, and you want to bring that level down. So if you, say, for instance, if you train in the morning and you go faster training, it's not going to be good for you. Even if you go at night time, if if you not if you haven't had a good meal or you don't plan to eat something really quickly after, it's going to not give you the results that you would like it to give you. Um, so what we want to focus on is around your training time, especially have 30 to 40 grams. Yes, that's a lot of food mm -hmm. of protein into your body to tell your, your body and six, stop the signaling to use the muscle for energy so that allows your body to actually start it's got enough bcaa's in it branch chain amino acids which fuels your body and it stops otherwise it needs to break into your muscle and start using the bcaa's in your muscle yeah wow so make sure eat half an hour after training definitely a must if yeah. that's morning night whenever that's definitely something you have to to look at Okay, I hope everyone's ticking that off and writing that down. <laughs> that, is, that is new stuff because in my head, um, mm -hmm. it's like, well, the longer I can fast for, the better, allegedly, right? We actually studied this at uni um, about the intermittent fasting. I did a whole report on it. Um, and, yeah, they're still teaching that to women of all ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, terrible. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. So. This works for guys. Yeah. But for us ladies in perimenopause and menopause, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I want to touch on, because I didn't get right into all of the definitions, I want to touch on what menopause is as different to peri and what postmenopause is, because I want to make a point about bone density. So if I get off track, can you remind me? I'm just going to write it down now. So um, I said that, you know, perimenopause is when your cycle starts to change in some way, and that can actually be a seven to 10 year period. Even in some research, it's up to 14 years. Um, and the average age of menopause in Australia is 51. Interestingly, in India, it's 46. So it does change um, in different parts of the world, which I don't know the reason for, but it, it has been observed. Um, and and many, menopause is that one day in your life that you can look back on. 12 months ago, I had my last period. Haven't had a period for the last 12 months. So that is called menopause, that one day. Everything after that one year period is called postmenopause. And what we know for sure is that from that stage of that 12 months of no cycle at all, your hormone levels will have dropped. So your estrogen, your progesterone, and also your testosterone as well. And so when your estrogen drops, um, we see a higher incidence of risk of heart disease, cardiovascular issues, um, and also with bone density as well. Now, bone density is the strength of your bones. So if you imagine that inside your long bones, you've got some areas that look like honeycomb, and they can't, this is honeycomb. <laughs> there's some little holes and some gaps there, right? My fingers are quite thick, so that means there's a lot of strength here. So if there's impact to the bone, they're not going to break. But what happens in um, in osteoporosis, which is quite prevalent in the postmenopausal um, 
uh, population, it means that the honeycomb, the edges of it actually thins. And so you can imagine if you were to, to hit into honeycomb that's really thin, it's brittle, it's going to break. And so when we strength train, we're actually having our um, the muscles of pulling bones together and the muscles create um, to form a tendon which attaches to a bone. So every time we're pulling on that bone, then it's actually sending a signal to the bone that you need to remodel, you need to break down, you need to build back up. It happens over and over again all of our life. Um, build up and break down, build up, break down. If we are not moving our body or if we have that forward head posture or if we're hunched over and round, we'll actually remodel in that way. So it's really important that we move all the time. So I'm a yogi, so I'm always teaching a better posture and stretching and opening up. But strength training, Marianne, can you just share a little bit about how that affects um, our bone strength? Yes. So... The actual, um, how can I, okay. So if you actually lift, you know how we improve our muscle? We actually in strength, increase the strength of our bone as well, bone structure as well. Now, heavy lifting is good for that, but there's something else which is called, um, like, in, I don't know if you know what plyometric kind of training is. That's yeah. where you'll be um, going down, throwing something against the wall, um, where you'll be doing like lunges, biometric lunges, mm -hmm. jumping squats, yeah. um, things like that. So we actually put like, uh, like have the pouncing on mm -hmm. your body mm -hmm. so that your body will um, push the minerals back into your bone structure as well. Yeah, right. So that, as well as heavy lifting, is really, really beneficial. Yeah. Otherwise, our bones to Britain. Yeah, Britain. yeah, exactly. Now, something that um, Dr. Stacey Sims talks about is that if you are sedentary or you've been injured or, or you had a period of time where you haven't been moving and mobile too much, we don't want to go straight into plyometrics because all I see is that that's money walking mm -hmm. in the massage therapy door. Um, and we don't <laughs> want to go straight into heavy lifting either. So this is yeah. where you need someone to be guiding you and coaching you just to get you moving again, just to get you into the habit, just to start to build that, um, I guess, that internal strength so that you can get a bit more fancy. So start small, get fancy later. And that's definitely where Marianne can help guide you with that. So, so don't think all is lost. If you've been doing steady state phase two for so long and you think, oh, I want to try plyometrics, don't just start jumping <laughs> because that could be problematic. Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely something that you can build and work towards. And even though your estrogen is declining, you can still eat in a certain way. You can move in a certain way that helps to boost and nourish your body. Um, what I know for sure, and I know Marianne, you'll, you'll agree, is that when we start to look after ourselves and we start to move and we do a little workout of some kind, you know, or we, we plan ahead and we make our meals and we're like ticking those boxes, that actually helps to produce a, new, um, a neurotransmitter in our brain called dopamine. It's our pleasure and reward molecule. So the more we do, even just one day of drinking, you know, adequate water um, or just one day of amazing meal prep where we can just, I always feel like a rock star because I'm just eating so well, right? Just one day will that boost you. And then you do it for another day and another day. And suddenly it's a week and suddenly it's two and three and four. That will motivate you to keep going. Don't you agree, Marianne? Do you know what? That is so true. And that's what I love about what we teach in our programs, um, Belle, is that whatever we, because I don't know about you, but me as a lady in perimenopause, if something overwhelms me, I stop. Mm -hmm. I do exactly what I know I shouldn't do. <laughs> and that's my kind of way to protect myself. Yes. So if you start, if I start telling somebody today that you need to have just vegetables and meat, you've got to go for um, a three-hour session every day, uh, you need to drink three litres of water, um, and like a list of things to do, that is the biggest um pause that you'll put onto that that person's life yeah because nobody can cope with a thousand things to change in one go no 
No, 100%. That's me as well. <laughs> it's just, and I love it that you say it like that. It's just, you go straight into overwhelm. It's like my brain stops working and I just, yeah, I'm listening to you, but I'm not doing it. Like I can tell, you know? <laughs> so yeah, so that's what happens in my brain. And I think that's what um, is so important. Like when we decide to make a change, we need people around us. And so I want to segue into um, just finishing up here and just talking about our program. Um, it's a six week program. We we get behind you. We help support you. Like we've seen it. We've heard it. We've, we've probably felt it in our own self as well. Um, and we can work with you to achieve the results that that you want because everyone wants to achieve something that's personal to them. And so we, we do an individualized approach uh, and we also have a very easy, limited time that you need to be putting into it approach as well so that it can fit into your already really busy schedule. But hopefully with the meal plans in place, hopefully with your structure for movement, hopefully with this idea of we're going to give ourselves very intentional rest, you'll actually start to create space that helps to open a door that helps you to walk through into a much more peaceful next stage of your life. Because ultimately that's the goal, internal peace, calming the mind, feeling incredibly vibrant in your body. I mean, what's, what's more to, to look forward to than that? Wouldn't you agree? That is so true. That's exactly what you want because everybody, like, why would we turn become 50 and you think there's no way forward mm -hmm. why how can you keep living in a state of pain unhappiness not feeling happy with yourself and still be positive and be mm. there for the people around you yeah um so yeah that as i said that's all these things that people don't realize but it just puts such a stress on your body more stress on your body mm. and i'll just finish with this um i'm one of that 99.9% .9 of people that actually like I'm I am super focused I'm I can pace myself I can get up in the morning I can go to the gym it's just something because it's been a habit for me for so long mm -hmm. but not a lot of people's got that and that's why I'm so thankful and so excited to have you as part of this bell because for me I can tell people what to do but I you can't make anybody to do it. They have to decide and they decide for themselves and their minds. Yeah. And you've got the ability to help people to realize that and to lead them through that as well. Yeah, awesome. Super team here, because we we um really lean on each other and we can really help motivate. But you know, I used to be like you, but now <laughs> I have trained yeah. myself to have a meditation discipline, a breath work discipline. And so I can leverage what I do have a habit in and I can move that into something else so I want to share that you know most of our daily routines are a habit um, and because if we had to think consciously of everything we were going to do it would be, we couldn't get our life in order so so I already know those women that are listening to this they already have habits they've already formed them we just need to change them so that they're in line with their goals <laughs> for their life, right? And it is as simple as that. It's just a mindset shift. So if you want to learn more about how to um, work with us, I'm going to put all of the details below so you'll be able to find our links. Um, it starts with a phone call. It just starts with, um, let's have a chat. Let's find out where you're at. Let's find out what your goals are, what your needs are, um, and whether you move into an individualized program which, where it's just one on one or two, um, or if it's in to our group training sessions where we have um, we work together as a team and we build each other up we want to find out what's going to be perfect for you because everyone is at a different stage in their life um, but it starts with a phone call so let's get that happening you'll find everything below Thank you for so much for taking the time to, um, to find out a little bit more about how you can help yourself during this transition and way beyond. Um, share this with your girlfriends if you feel that this might be beneficial to them. And as always, ask questions, comment below, send us an email. Um, we're here to help. So thank you so much again. Thank you, Marianne, for sharing your incredible wisdom. And I look forward to doing this again with you soon. Thank you so much, ladies. Have to talk to plenty of you soon. Yes. Thanks, guys. Bye.